able to start the call. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. As usual, Danny is being a troublemaker, not letting me speak to introduce this call, but I've muted him. He's in the naughty corner. Really good to have everybody. John, welcome. Before I hand over the floor, uh, let me remind you that the views and opinions expressed on this call do not necessarily reflect those of Digital Experts LLC and all the subsidiaries, nor those of Digital Business Lounge. Having said that, you are allowed to unmute. And now he's not going to unmute. Like I know him by heart now. <laughs> he's not going to. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm allowed. Now I'm allowed to speak. I appreciate you, girls. Thank you. Do you read that whole thing for, for like all the calls that you host? Like, do you do that for everybody? So I'm not, I'm not special. That's good. That makes me, that makes me feel good. Sorry. What's up guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Gratitude, Attitude and Commitment. It's awesome to have you guys here. Thank you for joining us. Jacqueline, what's going on? Good to see you. Rick, welcome. All right. So today um we have a very special guest james bond joining us again mr thwaites what is up that's i'm gonna call him james bond from now on that's it when i see him i think of like sean connery you know um charlie welcome west coast thank you for uh for getting up and joining us my man all right today we have got a very special guest my man john brooks uh, who is in the center on my screen. I'm not sure where he is on yours. He has gotten uh, some facial hair, actually, since I recently saw him. So congratulations. Coming to America makes us at puberty. I'm proud of you. Um, who has a, agreed to come here uh, and let me ask him some questions. He's a little nervous. I don't know why. Um, but we are grateful, grateful to have him here. John, what is up, my man? Hey, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, everybody. Thanks for having me on, brother. For sure. Yeah. So when we spoke a week or so ago, John was actually sitting right here. He was he was here at, at my my lake house, uh, hanging out in Florida, which is um, which is just cool, right? Like the people we meet in this community, like we're actually real people, and you can like touch each other and stuff, not inappropriately, but you know, touch each other. And uh, and John has come over here and then we got to hang out a little bit, man. I got to take him to uh, to Ron John, which is like the most famous surf shop in the world, which is pretty cool. Um, didn't make it to the Space Center, but he'll be back and, uh, and check out some rockets and stuff. So uh, thank you for making the time to join us. Where are you at right now for, for, for everyone at home playing along? Uh, I'm in currently in Kannapolis in North Carolina. So which is from which is the Charlotte. UK, but I'm yeah, Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte in, in uh, North Carolina. Right on, right on. How's the weather? Weather's bliss, mate. Weather's lovely. Yeah, it's uh, starting to get cold. Winter's starting to set in slowly, but it's um, it's nice. It's nice. It stays a lot warmer here for longer than it does in the UK. That's for sure. So, yeah. for anybody who doesn't know, that's where I'm actually from, from the south coast of England in the UK. So, like it. You did not. We couldn't tell from the accent. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to start off uh, for once again. You know I, know, I know you've been here before hanging out with cool kids, but just, you know, put this on the front. And if it's your first time joining us here, we're glad you're here. Sometimes we have these calls and we have a topic and we talk about it. Uh, this is our call. Everybody talks. If you have a question or you want to say something, just shout it out. Um, and then sometimes we bring in people from our community uh, to interview them. Mostly it's people who are kind of behind the scenes. Um, so that uh, we just get to know them, right? Know that we're all real people and real people make this thing happen. So uh, today is an interview and I have got some professional interview questions here and we're gonna start off with a hard one for you. So what did you have for breakfast? What I have for breakfast? Uh, I had oats in a jar this morning actually. Bam, all yeah. right, just making sure you're still on the healthy breakfast cake, bro. Just checking. <laughs> All right. 100%. So what is your uh, role within our community here, John, for those who don't know? Uh, so here at LaunchU, I'm the advanced product manager for LaunchU. So I look after the Accelerate, Accelerate with You product, and currently I'm in development of the Collaborate product. But I also oversee 
um, operations in general as well. So I'm part of the operations team here. Sounds so, like a lot of responsibility. <laughs> it is that I enjoy it. Yeah, you know, it's very much behind the scenes. I'm not on camera or on calls um, like I used to be. I do really miss that actually. And uh, yeah, but it's um, it's very rewarding seeing what our members do as a result of all of our work behind the scenes. So yeah, it's cool. Awesome, awesome. So, and, and also John is also builds amazing websites. I don't know how much time he dedicates to that right now, but he actually built my Living Grateful website, The Mothership. It is the shit, right? It is way cooler than how I had it pictured in my mind. He made it come out even better than that. So I will be eternally grateful for you doing that for me. Thank you very much, sir. Um, so the, the what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of gratitude? First thing that comes to my mind, family, family. Nice. Um, I think one of the one of the quotes I heard or one of the things I heard a few years ago came from Gary Vee actually and he actually says it all of the time and it's if he wakes up in the morning and all the key members of his family and friends you know uh, are alive and well every single morning he's grateful he's eternally grateful nothing else can knock him down that day you know He's an entrepreneur, he's constantly putting out fires, but um, that's the one thing that he just makes him happy every morning. And I think when I started getting into that mindset, all of the other little problems and little fires that you face throughout the day, um, they become very insignificant. So um, when I think of gratitude, it's, um, yeah, being grateful for my family and where I am. Great answer, great answer. Um... So whenever you found the uh, the online space here, right, part of our community, what was your job? What were you doing whenever you found this? Car mechanic, fixing cars or vehicles. Yeah, I uh, started working or training to be a car mechanic when I was 15 and a half, 16. So did an apprenticeship with Ford Motor Company and been doing it ever since. So, yeah. But it got to the point when I was about 30 years old and I was like sick and tired of this, wanted to travel the world and actually do something I was passionate about. So, yeah, at the time, cold, wet, damp garage, fixing cars, not enjoying life. <laughs> nice. So I remember uh, whenever you told me that you had sold your tools. And that mm -hmm. was like the... Uh, no going back type thing, right? I mean, all your tools that you work on cause you had sold them to pursue to pursue this. So what was it mm -hmm. that, um, how did you come to that decision, right? To basically give up, uh, not give up, to exchange what all you had uh, learned in your trade and everything else for the next level? Yeah, um, that was quite a, and I appreciate you bringing that up. It's something I, I think about actually often. Um, I think it's that thing of letting go and going all in. You kind of hear that a lot. I mean, I heard it a lot when I was going through the journey, when I got involved with the SFM and started really getting involved with community, you know, let go, go all in, invest in yourself. But it wasn't until I actually decided to really knuckle down and I knew that, I wasn't going to be able to create like a, a six figure affiliate business straight out of the gate. I knew I'd have to learn digital skills and I wanted to build this website company and do other things as well. And I knew that the only way to do that was to go all in, to let go of the job, to actually fully focus on what it was I was passionate about. And that moment for me, selling the tools, um, I've worked my entire career to, you know, tens of thousands of pounds worth of tools and toolbox, you know, best tools in the world to do the job. Um, to just sell it like that with, you know, a lot of my other valuables and stuff in my home to be able to fund my passion and push forward with my online businesses and ventures and stuff. Um, it was a massive deal and it was a game changer for me. Um, yeah. That moment for me was the moment where everything changed.
because I then started letting go of other things and I just started trusting the process and trusting the journey. And I faced challenges, I had ups and downs, but everything just had a way of working itself out. And if something, you know, came at me, I knew how to deal with it. And it just kind of, you know, just do this. It's sort of like going through you. Do you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. I like that, man. I like that. So what does freedom mean to you? Like, you, you know, you said what comes to your mind, you think of gratitude, what comes to your mind, you think of freedom. Because that's a very broad word, right? It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, I've actually given this a lot of thought over the last year because I've been really, really, really narrowing down on my own personal brand and my own personal business. And freedom for me is that time thing. Um, having the time to do what you want when you want, you know, like right now, like if I wanted to, I could end this call, I could jump on a plane, I could fly anywhere in the world and see anybody who I wanted to, apart from COVID restrictions, of course. But for me, that is, that's the one thing, freedom and being able to have the time to do what you want to do and spend it with who you want, because it's the one thing you can't buy, but you can create it if you work hard enough and being able to create time and give time to others for me that's the ultimate freedom so yeah yeah you know like a few weeks back spur of the moment decision i want to jump on a plane come see my mate danny haven't met you in person and i've known you three years so it's um yeah time for me right on man yeah that was pretty cool it's pretty cool to be able to say all right i'm not gonna i'm gonna block my schedule off these two days we're going to go hang out, right? Like that's, that's what it's about for me too. Yeah. It's, yeah the yeah. time freedom, it's the jam. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big, big fan, big fan. If you don't have some time freedom, you should definitely get some time freedom. Now I have a puppy though. So I have no freedom. Um, so what is the coolest thing that you have seen since you have been over here in America? The coolest thing I've seen. Um, There's a few, but probably the ones that stand out to me. Um, I went to visit the Smoky Mountains. I've actually been like three or four times now, which are a couple of hours from here in Charlotte. Um, the Smoky Mountains or Appalachian Mountains, as they're known. Um, I'm a mountains and lakes guy. You know, I'm passionate about film and photography and, you know, being able to just wake up in the morning, grab my camera bag, disappear into the mountains with my partner and just take photos all day like that's just cool and the uh is it the blue ridge parkway i think it is the road that runs yeah. through them never seen anything like it i mean i visited scotland in the uk but for me that was just something else just epic vast landscapes you know uninterrupted views of endless mountains um amazing and the other one, I think, was coming down to see you and getting a view of Space Kennedy in the distance. Last time I came to Florida was when I was 12 years old. Um, and shortly after my dad passed away, it was a treat for me from my mum to come to Florida and go to Space Kennedy because it was something I always wanted to do with my dad. I've always been passionate about space and rockets and space travel and all that stuff. So being able to come down and see you and kind of see space kind of in the distance it just brought back some memories for me and that was kind of special you know so yeah yeah so two things very cool very cool um besides our awesome weather what is something that is super different between uh the uk and over here oh man that was easy uh the roads and the cars <laughs> i'm a big car fanatic so uh the one thing that's different over here is like the trucks, like huge, huge trucks. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a lover of like the F-150, the Raptor and Dodge Rams and all that stuff. So being able to uh, experience vast roads, big trucks, like, yeah, it's cool. Right on, big man. difference. It is. Yeah, we like we like to pollute the, the ozone all at one time. We like to just, <laughs> just get it in there. You know what I mean? And just just accelerate that that's what we do um so this is so this is a question where is the london bridge currently located test some of your knowledge here 
by the way, some of these questions, we're going to learn some shit. Just saying. What kind of question is that? London. I mean, London Bridge. Cursing. Oh, okay. Okay. That's not for you. That's for Danny. It's a reminder. <laughs> Troublemaker. This, this is what Curls does like for the two weeks between the next call. She goes around and looks for memes to tell me not to say bad words. Right. <laughs> um, I love it. I love which it. I, which I love. Obviously very ineffective, but I'm a huge fan and I love you, Curls. Um, the London Bridge is actually located in Arizona. Really? We okay. bought that shit for $3 million in 1968 and moved it brick by brick. Arizona. I didn't know that. I did wow. not either. I just learned that recently. Isn't that cool? I'm going to Google that afterwards. Google, bro. Trust me. How do you think I found it? I don't know anything. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know? And then I verified that it was real and it's apparently real by Googling something else. So, you know. Um, have you ever, this is a deep one, have you ever farted in public and blamed it on someone else? Definitely, of course, all the time. Just making sure we're on page. Um, what is some great advice that you have received that stands out to you? Be as real as you can be. Don't be someone you're not. Something that took me a long time to uh, to digest fully and start acting upon. So yeah, be yourself. Yeah, be you man. Everybody else is taken. Exactly. Um, if you had to start your online journey over again, what would you do differently this time around? If anything. That's a tough one. Um, I probably... Well, I'm a serious interviewer. I mean, these aren't all just layups. You know what I mean? I don't think I'd do anything differently. I think the only thing I would do is I would... Um, I would make more of an effort with the community. I think especially the past year to 18 months, my life has got incredibly busy. Um, business has gone really well. There's been a lot happen with launch you. Um, and I just can't literally like real narrow into business. And I've not been as involved with the community and friends of mine within the community. So if I was going to do it again, I would make sure that I could balance my time better and learn boundaries. Um, I think that's something that I've come to learn over the last few months is setting clear boundaries for myself so that I do give time to family, friends, community, and engage a little more. So that's probably the one thing I'd change. That's good, man. Yeah, the cool, you know, boundaries... Healthy boundaries are awesome, but we have to stick, you know, sticking to those boundaries is really where it where, where mm. it sets it up, right? Because if we don't respect yeah. our boundaries, no, nobody else is going to do it for us, man. Yeah, I love that. Exactly. You know, the, the 90-day uh, video journey was huge for me in getting to know the community. I mean, I did it three times because, yeah. you know, I just suck at being on camera. But um, that's where we met, you know, was the 90-day video journey, right? So, yeah, I mean, awesome. yeah, anybody who hasn't done that, huge fan. You, you should uh, do that to interact with the community. I remember when Jacqueline, when we first started this call, she was so scared to do the 90 day video journey and she kind of put it out there and made the commitment and then did it. And now she's basically like Oprah Winfrey. She's just natural on camera. You know what I mean? So what is, um, what's the most powerful experience you've had in recent memory? Most powerful experience. Danny, these are tough. <laughs> you know, I'm no cupcake, big guy. You know. Okay, I'm going to relate this to my personal business again, um, because I have a massive problem with uh, social anxiety. Putting myself out there. Um, I'm going to say. So about three or four months ago, I really started tapping into my YouTube business again and trying to understand what the problem was with me putting myself out there. And I started watching a ton of videos from YouTubers who, 
they really dug into their kind of journeys like they'd been on youtube for three years and they've done this well and but they weren't always there they were here and this is how i this is how my journey went and i really started going back and looking at like the very first videos that those youtubers and filmmakers started putting out um and i think as a collective that whole kind of experience of going through those videos and and looking at those it made me realize John, look at where you were three years ago. Like you haven't got 5 million subscribers on YouTube right now, but look at what you've done and look at what you could do in the next three years. And I think that kind of experience of just going through that and getting rid of those fears, trying to not suppress them, but just pull them out, acknowledge them and then let them go. Like for me, that was a quite a profound um experience that i've been through over the last like couple of months so from a personal business point of view yeah i love it i think that's super common too you know mm -hmm. um i like that bro. i like that so what brings you the most peace and serenity i think i think balance honestly, balance in all areas of my life. I think when I'm, when I'm handling everything as I should, and I'm not getting anxious about a meeting that's coming up that I haven't prepped for, um, I don't know something that's not going on, uh, or I don't know something that is going on even. Uh, and like, I know that I've made an effort with my family, with my friends, like when, when I'm putting an effort in all areas of my life, and there's a nice even balance there, but I'm also taking time for myself and looking after my own mental health. I think for me, that gives me the ultimate peace because I then wake up, you know, like at the moment I'm waking up every day. I'm grateful for everything I have in my life. I know that in all areas of my life, I'm putting in even effort and it just brings me happiness, brings me peace, you know? So, yeah. Nice man. Great answer. Great answer um what's your favorite part about your role within our community well that was easy um seeing the transformation in people easy uh and i didn't have to be you know that isn't even being in the position i'm in right now um that's literally like seeing where you were like three years ago to where you are now seeing other friends of mine and other members where they were three years ago to where they are now like the only difference is is that i can play an active part in deciding how to help members the best instead of just being a part of the community i'm actually being able to control that and being able to you know provide trainings and challenges and you know work with stuart and the rest of the team to be able to you know, level up and provide more for everybody. But that never, that didn't just start. That was something that's always been there. And the transformation in people is the number one thing. Um, just seeing what people can create um, seemingly overnight, because I think when you're working online digitally, like time just goes like that, you know, and seeing what people can do in such a short space of time um, is phenomenal. So yeah, the transformation of people for me is the number one thing. I love it. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I think it seems like it's just overnight when it's somebody else. But for us, it's like, man, that shit takes forever. You know what I mean? Like, I feel sure. like I remember that just like, here I go, here I go, here I go, here, I go. you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, God, it's been like, you know, a week, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Stuart said, I remember one of the things he said when, when I first came in, and I'm sure he still says it, that uh, people really overestimate what they can accomplish in a year, and they're underestimate what they can accomplish in like five years or 10 years, you know, and I found that to be so unbelievably true, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially for impatient people like me, you know, um, yeah. but grateful for all of it, man. You know, all of it makes us mm -hmm. better. So I love, I love seeing the growth in people and the transformation in people. Like that's, that's one of my absolute favorite things about uh, being able to hang out with everybody on this call. 
you know, doing this call is to see where people were and kind of where they are now, just in, not even in like their business from a monetary perspective, but just as human beings, right? And then the comfort level to come out and talk about stuff and everything. I just love it, you know? Yeah, I think um, that's just a, just a kind of put a bow on that. I think that's, that's one thing is like the confidence in people. I think like for when I started, like I was petrified to come out on a Zoom call just to literally turn my camera on and show my face, not speak, but just turn my camera on. Um, and I think that's the one thing as well, uh, which ties into the whole transformation thing is the confidence within people. You know, I was shocking what, speaking and being on camera like three years ago, I'd never do it. Um, massive introvert. And like, I just look at my journey and how far I've come and seeing it in other people, it's just like, it's amazing amazing so yeah it is well it's, it's not real natural for most of us i don't think no. you know what i mean no. I, mean, I guess if you're young like there's like my nephews like they all live their whole life's on video you know what i mean but uh it's just i don't know it's just different for a lot of us i definitely relate to that like a hundred percent you know yeah. this is the first time i've yeah. been on camera with my clothes on and it's like totally different <laughs> you know what i mean um <laughs> So what is your least favorite part about your role in the community? Least favorite. It's a tough one. Again, I think it's actually, um, trying to please everybody. I think there is, I'm somebody who wants to literally please everybody or I would do anything and everything to please everybody. I feel so as a member, I feel so like driven to do everything I can, but unfortunately in the role that I have, you know, I'm in charge of operations. I'm in charge of managing products and I have things that I, and certain things I have to stick to and certain guidelines and, Obviously, this is a company as well. So there's bottom lines, there's profits, there's losses, there's all these things to take into consideration. So when you step into a role like that, you have a lot of balance, again, to, to, to contend with. That can be hard because sometimes you want to really run with your heart, but you have to go with your head. And that can be, that can be tough. That can be tough. So, um, yeah in the role that's probably the hardest thing for me is that i always want to run with my heart and do the best thing but sometimes being a being a manager you have to run with your head because you know it is a business after all right on. that makes sense that makes sense ben did you have you you raised your hand bro did you did you have a question or that was totally by accident that was a danny move right there bro didn't mean to do it i feel you <laughs> all right um what is a moment that stands out that's uh, that's touched you on your journey? Not physically, like your your heart. <laughs> oh man, that's there isn't just one. There's so many. Um, I think the most uh, the biggest moment for me, though, apart from obviously meeting your legendary ass down at Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. um, I think the, the biggest one for me was the first live event that I went to back in 2019, October, November, 2019, somewhere around there. I think it was November. Um, it was the last live elite workshop that Justin Wolf ran and it was in London and it was meeting the community for the first time, meeting people like myself for the very first time and realizing that oh my God, these people are real. Oh my God, this isn't just, you know, it's where I met Carl's for the first time. Like, you know, we met in London and we went to some wine bar and had some, some drinks together the day before the event. And like, it became very real to me then that like, this is something magical. This is something amazing. Um, I remember that point as well. That was actually a very significant point because I was, I was terrified again massive introvert hate crowds hate just talking in general don't like being around a lot of people um and i just remember in that event um Carl's will back me up on this i was close to having a panic attack 
the actual first hour I was in the hall with everybody. It was like 200 people in this hall, like Justin's on stage, everyone's clapping. It's like amazing times. And I'm there like, you know, like this shaking away, <laughs> you know? And Carl just pulls me to one side and she just gives me the biggest hug. And she's like, just, you know, calm down, mate. It's all good. You know, and just, just, just set my mind at peace and just made me realize that everybody else is in exactly the same position. Um, and meeting her with other people there as well, like that was that was a really big deal to me. And it's one of the things that kind of completely changed the way I looked at things and really set me out. It really helped me gain my confidence more as I went through the journey. So when I came away from that, I started implementing different things into my life to just help me build on that. But that was kind of the, the foundation you know, the building block for where it started for me. So yeah, it was a really, that was one of the biggest, I think, significant moments for me in my journey. I love it, man. Yeah. Hassan. Hi, everyone. What's up, bro? Hi, everything pretty okay? Yeah, John. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I was actually there. I don't know if you remember. It was November the I 2nd, do, 2019. Uh, second and third, I believe. Um, and yeah, it was amazing because uh, I had the privilege of being on the same table as you. Uh, and, you know, I, I did see your uh, videos and, you know, uh, then you on your workshop. So I saw some videos of you, you know, doing the mechanics. Uh, and also, I, I believe you did some uh, work at, the, at your, your home. So you was uh, refurbishing it, I think. And it was so inspiring to see you'd never know. And I thought at that time I was, I was, you know, like we all do, I guess, being an introvert, you're not comfortable in crowds. You're not sure what to expect, uh, but you know, deep down that there's a reason something's pulled you to this event. Um, and, you know, again, just being grateful that I had this opportunity and to be able to see it for real, you know, and be with other people. And for me, it was a light bulb moment because I realized it's not just me, you know, we're, we're, we're all, we've all got a, you know, uh, our limitations that we put on ourselves. Uh, and it's when you get into a community like this that you realize you, you're not the only one. And that gives you the confidence to actually break through. So, um, you know, I really admire, you know, what, what you've done throughout. And I'm really pleased that I was able to join today because I've actually started, started full time work this week. And I um, just, you know, took this hour off to, to be with you guys. So thanks for that. I love it. I appreciate that. Thanks Thank you, mate. And uh, I do remember you, mate, and it's good to see you. Um, yeah. It feels 20, like 2019 ago. was so long ago that Hassan's beard was was the length of mine. <laughs> Where we met you. And... <laughs> oh, man. And yeah, so. Says, and sorry, I'll just jump in. When he says he was having a panic attack, he's not exaggerating. He was borderline hyperventilating red sweating shaking from head to toe it was just I saw it at one point and everybody was trying to speak to him I was like I gotta save that man <laughs> he's, he's, it was if you threw him in a pool full of sharks it would have been the same <laughs> it was just like all right Ramon this is family and actually I was a, I was a little bit tough on you as well <laughs> I did push you off the cliff but hey you had to grow the wings, <laughs> but uh, yeah, look at where you are now. It's amazing to see your journey. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kels. Yeah, man. It's the energy, the energy of everybody there. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. And we're able to get live again. It's I'm, I'm excited. I mean, we feel everybody's energy on the call, you know, but it's, it's cool being in a room, you know, energy is real, you know, and it, it affects us for sure, man. Um, yeah. I, you know, talking about the, the video journey and, you know, connecting to people in the community. Whenever uh, I remember when we were on the video journey together and I was like, it was my second time and I still didn't like doing it, um, but I committed to it. Right. And uh, I remember thinking one day when we started the doors around the world thing, like I was sitting there one day and I had to do a video for the day and I was like, I'm just not fucking feeling it. Like, I just don't want to do a video today, but I committed to do it in 90 days. Right. And I saw this door on like a church or something. I was like, that's a cool door. So I went and shot this video like, hey, check out this cool door. This door is wherever I was at the time. Right. And then John shot one somewhere over there in England. So people started just shooting videos 
or right, just in front of different doors all over the place, right? And it kind of just started this thing that you remember that where we were just at different doors all over the place. Oh, that's a cool door, you know. And then like one day, I was like, it's just a closet door in my house. I'm like, this is my closet. Like that was my video for the day. You know what I mean? But it just, it just, I don't know, man. It's a way to connect to people all over the world, man. I just thought that, that was cool, man. I love, I love that. I think about that sometimes when I see a really cool door. <laughs> good times uh, mate. good times so this is shocking is this true or false well, i guess i just kind of blew it right there i'll come back to you. um what is one positive healthy habit that you've built and stuck with uh that's hard again because they change <laughs> I think the one, no, actually, I think it's, um, yeah, note-taking or journaling. I don't, I don't journal, but what I am really good at is not keeping things in my mind and getting overwhelmed. Like, I don't do that. Um, I, like, I have a notepad here, like, it's full. And, uh, yeah, it's my Bugs Bunny one. It's amazing. Nice. Um, Amazon. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, when I have stuff on my mind, I literally wake up. Jacob is said. <laughs> yeah, let me get my affiliate link here. Where are we? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, for me, I think one of the things I do, and I do it most mornings, if I've got stuff on my mind that I thought about overnight, um, stuff to do with you know different businesses, whatever it may be, um, I just dump it on a notepad and I'll just get it out there and get it down. And then through the day, I'll work through that and put it where it needs to. Um, I use a tool called Melanote to organize my entire life and brain. So all of my different businesses and things are all in there. So I can literally put this little note exactly where it needs to go. Um, and I have a system in place now where I just don't get overwhelmed with things. I have a set amount of tasks to do in a day. I work through those tasks. I get them done. The day ends. I start a new day. It's as simple as that. Um, so, yeah, the, the one habit I think I've got into is note taking, getting stuff out of here, down on paper. So that the rest of my mind can actually focus on the task in hand instead of like all this, you know, fog and chatter going on with a thousand other things. So, yeah. I love it. That's a good habit to be in because um, it's overwhelming, you know, with, with all that we get to do. So uh, that's a way to make a positive. What is a habit uh, that doesn't serve you that you currently have that you would like to get rid of? Oh, that one's easy. Um, boundaries. Again, you know, I, I, I do struggle with boundaries. I do struggle with, um, I'm going to say balance of boundaries is one thing, you know, it's tough. When you're, when you're incredibly passionate about something, you know, whether it's creating YouTube videos, web design, um, you know, coming up with ideas for different products and services, it's really hard. Like if you've given yourself one hour to focus on said business, um, to just use that hour and then step away and go visit your mum or do something like you know, it's really hard. So for me, that's a constant thing I'm learning at the moment. I've implemented a few new things recently to try and help me with that. But I think uh, that's something I'm definitely going to try and improve on over time um, because it's not healthy to just push yourself all of the time. And I feel I've done that in the past couple of years. So, yeah. Right on. If I can help with that, let me know. Um, what is the last book that you read? uh four hour work week tim ferris good book yeah tim ferris yeah yeah four hour work week yeah good book highly that's recommended cool. i like the virtual assistant aspect of that that's something that's on my list to address in 2022 yes yeah um what is something that makes you proud to be a human being there you go rick it's a great book Proud to be a human being. It's a deep question, Danny. <laughs> oh, um, it's a surface level here, man. We talk about farting in public, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think just being human, like it's 
it's fucking awesome quite frankly like we're 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 all on this planet this ball of rock you know blasting through space at a million miles an hour like you know um and we're all here like you get to create your own destiny in whatever form that is whenever you want whenever you're ready like there's nothing stopping you i think we all have boundaries and challenges and things that come up but like you're kind of free to do whatever you want to do if you can find the means to do it um and yeah like i think it's just awesome in general so i think because i've come from a place of really really struggling um to the point like where i ran out of food i ran out of fuel to put in my car i didn't have money in the bank to actually pay for stuff like times got really really hard so i know what it's like to really flip and struggle um i think just being a human and just how resourceful we are and how we just connect together is it's just cool man it's just cool totally agree man the human experience is pretty sweet good and the bad right? it's all part of the experience you know we can't appreciate prosperity and abundance and the good things if in my opinion if we haven't experienced the opposite sometimes we don't appreciate them as much you know what i mean like i think it, I think exactly thanks for granted for sure um to quote irene webster there's um there's always ebbs and flows in life but you know you just let them pass through keep going that's it man um did you just say flipping by the way there yes. there's there's no no f f bombs on this uh, yeah no i didn't i didn't swear just letting you know um true or false it is illegal to get drunk in a pub in england it's false true it is actually a law can you believe that really not and it doesn't get broken like right now that there's not a million people breaking it but i'm just telling you it is on the books as a law and ian is going to google it i can see him diligently yeah <laughs> I, I, I don't i don't drink in pubs so i have no idea i've never got drunk in a pub by the time i went to england i had quit drinking otherwise i'd probably still drunk. be there in a pub so you know that's that's real um what is something that you have learned about yourself in the past year that you previously didn't know or believe to be true Something I've learned about myself in the past year. Um, that's a hard one, mate. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, we can come back to it if you if you need to to give it a thing. Actually, no. Do you know what? Do you know what? I think it's. I'm actually quite resourceful. I think where I used to be such an introvert and where I used to be. Um, I used to lack massive confidence. Um, yeah, I've I've become very resourceful over the last um, over the last six to twelve months, and I've surprised myself. So yeah, I would say that. I would say that's an accurate statement. You know, because I remember not too long ago, like a few months, when you were trying to get to America, and you were on lockdown, that you couldn't come in the country, and so you had to go to another country for a couple of weeks before you could come to this country. So you went to Dubai and then you got here and then there was a storm and your plane wouldn't go. So you hopped on a bus and took a bus and then you got picked up in a car. So all of those things, man, like that's out traveling the world, dude, right? Like that's the adventure. That's being resourceful to find a way to get, get where you're trying to go. That's it. That's it. Selling all your shit and then just being like, I'm out. Like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, let me see here. What is the most imaginative insult you can come up with right now? I'm no good at insulting people, Danny. I can't do that. That's acceptable. Imagine. Just making sure. Yeah, I, I don't insult people. <laughs> That's cool. I'm just, just checking. You know, it never hurts to ask. I might take yours and use it for later. Um, What is your biggest pet peeve? What with other people? In life. My biggest pet peeve. Um, it doesn't have to be other people. Like it could be 
put the toilet paper on the other way or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, it's almost becoming a problem for me at the moment. Um, I think like minimalism, cleanliness, like being tidy, like everything has to be in line with me and organized and clean and like i can't yeah. relate to that at all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know danny is very much that way when i went to his uh, his lake house i walked in there i was like like my second home everything just has its place <laughs> yes <laughs> but yeah i, will, I wish uh, i wish i was I'll a little bit love on that while you're on that i'll give you some love on that so when john left i wasn't here i was in jacksonville and I came back, and so I have like all my late. Everything is in, like it's pretty. It's pretty sick. Um, I have problems, but he put like all my little drinks, my seltzer water, uh, all the labels facing forward in exactly the same number of each flavor, just like how I keep it. Right? I didn't tell him. I didn't ask him to do it, but I locked in, and my fridge was that way. Like everything was exactly labels turned, hundred percent, ninety degree. Like, like I like it. So appreciate it, bro. Much, much love. Much love on that, you know. That was I'm glad you appreciate it. It's still a problem. I know. I noticed those things. You know, I noticed those things. Um, I'm not saying that's healthy. But that's just real. Um, okay, if there was a book about your life, what would be the title? Oh, that's easy. I've already started that. Adventure of a lifetime. Adventure, which is the name of your company. Look at that. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So if Hollywood made a movie about you, who would play you? Me. I'd want to play my own character, I think, because no one, no one can kind of... There's one thing about storytelling and one thing about like filmmaking that I've really come to uh, learn about, which is about like creating the emotion. Like, if you can create the emotion and connect with your audience, um that's when you really create the connection and people start to dig into your story i don't think you can do that easily i don't think you can give that to an actor easily so for me um if you want the story told properly you're the only one who can tell your own story so yeah me i like that i like that i had uh, there's this girl she's a friend of mine in recovery and um you know sometimes you speak you tell your story right and she was just so 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 nervous and uh what what made her come to settle down a little bit was she says you know i just told myself that it's my story and only i can tell it nobody else knows what i'm gonna say you know it's just it's mine and i'm the only one that can do it you know and that that yeah. stuck with me i like i like that i like that yeah um finish this vulnerability is putting yourself out there Putting yourself out there and being completely yourself. It's hard. It's really hard. But you grow immensely from it. Is Big Ben a clock? I'm going to say no. Is it a Tower of Candy Floss? <laughs> ah! Yes. So yes. I got it. Big, 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 In my ben, book, big Ben has always not, been a clock. Big Ben is not a clock. Big Ben is the bell that's in the clock. <laughs> See, other people know this. Other people know this. You're slipping, bro. Your mate, your mates um, have your mates have hey, your from, knowledge. I'm from Dorset <laughs> on the coast. I live on the beach. I don't go into <laughs> London. <laughs> I love this. All I like doing this. Like Karina came on, she was from Romania. So I just started learning some shit about Romania. I just thought that was cool. You know? I feel terrible. I don't know anything about my own country. Dude, before I went there, I thought everybody lived in England lived in London. So you know more than me. Like I just thought that was how it was. Like, oh, you're from, you're from the UK? Cool. You live in London. Yeah. Um, I do know that it's cold. Very cold. Mm -hmm. What is the weirdest thing about you? Weirdest thing about me? Um, I don't know. My sense of humor. Okay. You got a good joke? I mean, you got no, no not answer. really. Not no. Really. no. That's what's weird about it. That's what's weird about it. It's not funny. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Who uh, or what frustrates you the most? Who or what frustrates me the most? Um, at the moment, who frustrates me the most? I'm going to say the English government with restrictions and things. I'm facing some... Uh, I'm facing some pretty tough decisions around travel at the moment. So, yeah, that's my frustration at the moment. Yeah. We'll leave it there. <laughs> there you go. We, we call those luxury problems, my friend. Luxury yes, problems. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is something you're deeply grateful for right now? Um, right now, everyone in my life. Everyone in my life who is close to me, who has helped me the last uh, the last few months, really, you know. For anyone who knows me, I've been on a real, real journey. The last couple of months has been really hard getting to this point. Um, yeah, especially you, mate. Grateful for you, you know. Had a few challenges over the past weeks, but you've been there. You've given me your time, and I appreciate it. So, you know this. Absolutely, brother. Great, great, grateful, grateful to be present, man. Um, true or false? The queen is not allowed to enter the House of Commons. True. That is true. That is true. Yes. No, I know one no thing Brit about my no, country. No British monarch is, apparently. Um, since like King Charles I apparently stormed in like hundreds of years ago and announced that a bunch of people will be arrested and they were like, you don't really have any power over here, guy. So, yeah. Um, what was the first capital of England? I don't know. Bro, Not London. I know so much more about England than you do today. I'm just... What have you done the last day? Just Google. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just looked up some interesting facts just to see if you knew them. Does anybody else on the call know without Googling the first capital of England? James Bond? I was going to say Colchester or Winchester. It, uh, it's it's Winchester. It's Colchester. Winchester. Is Colchester. The, I think it's Colchester, Danny. You think it's what? I think it's Colchester. Well, my research. <laughs> Uh, my, my Google, Google. <laughs> says it was Winchester from 827 to 1066. Right. I thought it was Colchester. So. That's okay. If I'm wrong. I would have said Winchester. It's okay. it's okay. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. It's okay. Um, is it a criminal offense to stick a postage stamp upside down on an envelope in England? I'm going to say yes, because you're disrespecting the queen. Criminal offense, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember some random fact about that, like one Christmas. <laughs> Who owns all of the swans on the Thames River? The queen. Yeah. The queen. I'm passing. Unbelievable, dude. And do you know? that it is someone's actual job to count them mm -hmm. called yep, swan, swan upping. It's a job. <laughs> they pay someone to count swans for the queen. That's like, that's a little extra, but whatever. Um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? To fly. That would be so cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, to fly. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a rocket going up today. Be like right, right there. The amazing. Yeah. That'd be fun. Amazing. Um, Love that. Since you've been in this space, what is it that you believe holds most people back from achieving their goals, in your opinion? Themselves getting in your own way, believing that you're not good enough, believing that um, everybody else is so much better than you, everybody else has got, got so much more confidence than you. Um, 
Yeah. It's themselves, like a shadow of that all of the time. You can get over that hurdle, you can get over anything. Right on, man. I agree with that. Um, what is something that would surprise people to know about you? Um, Aside from the fact that you don't know shit about your home country. Aside from that, what would surprise people to know about you? What would surprise people? See, I put myself out there quite a bit. So I think people know quite a lot about me. There's not really a lot I hold back. Um, massive James Bond fan. There you go. Massive James Bond fan. I used to geek out on James Bond. All the videos, all the DVDs, all the cards, all the cars. Like, you know, um, yeah. Nice. There you go. That's that. Oh, and I oh, actually, actually, yeah. actually, I only just got rid of my all of my James Bond collection that I was collecting since like five, two years ago when I got rid of all my stuff in my house. So yeah, there's a there's a fun fact. I like that. I used to have all the VHSs. I didn't have like a yeah. collection of the cars or anything, but yeah, huge James Bond fan. I love it, love it. And uh, Sherlock Holmes, actually, I love Sherlock Holmes. When I came to uh, London for my first live event i went up to 221b baker street which isn't really an address uh and did the little touristy sherlock holmes thing i have one in my home office in jacksonville a little sign that i got from there that's like yeah i'm into that shit dude that was super cool i thought i was the best awesome yeah awesome all right last question this is a tough one of all the people who live in florida Lorna and danny who have ever interviewed you who's the best one Uh, taking an awful long time to think about this <laughs> of course you brother well thank of you thank you. you very much man thank you feed my ego for the day i'm grateful um dude thank you for coming and hanging out with us man i really appreciate it um next time you come back down to florida we'll hang out hang out and do a little live call i'm um, super grateful that you've taken the time and for all you do behind the scenes for the community I know it's it's a lot, and uh, you know you guys make this whole run. So I really do appreciate it, man. I'm glad that you got to come come down here and hang out in the Sunshine State, you know, and uh, soak up some of that sun. It was good for you. I'm enjoy it, and I appreciate you taking the time today, man. Thanks, mate. I appreciate you having me here, and um, it's great to see everybody. And yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, I look forward to the next one. See, and that that wasn't that bad, was it? No, of course not. Of course okay, not. Well, I'm a little nervous. Yeah. Um, I'm always nervous when I get on the camera. I'm always <laughs> nervous when I got to talk. All right. So our action items, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first one, of course, same as always. Reach out and tell someone that you appreciate them. Uh, not in text, but verbally, you know, voice message, something like that. Just tell them, hey, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. Glad you're breathing. Um, the second one would be to read or listen uh, to our book of the week, which this is the only book of the week we've ever repeated. This is one word that will change your life, okay? So homework for our next call. We did this last year about this time. Uh, and I know quite a few of you are actually here last year. Um, when we did this, you come up with one word for the year, right? Um, if you, if, if you were here last year, we're going to talk a little bit about what we've done um, to live through that, how it's affected us, how it's worked. My word was impact, still is impact. Um, and we're going to come up with our word for next year, which is super cool. So this book, it's like five bucks, or it was whenever I looked last time on Audible, five bucks. And it's really small. You can read it one trip to the bathroom. It's not big. It's a great book. Um, that's the book of the week. You should check it out. Curls. Thank you for being magnificent and letting us all play together. You did a great job. Uh, everyone, thank you for coming and hanging out. We are super grateful. Uh, and I'm grateful to be in your space, man. I love doing this. You guys are the best. And I appreciate you. Thank you. 
And today they were on fire. There was some banter in the chat. I had a few giggles, especially with Ian. It was quite hilarious today. So thank you for that. I'm grateful for all the giggles that you gave me. It was really cool. Wow. I love it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, and I, I wish I could participate in the chat and do everything else, but that's all I can do to just actually read my questions and not break shit. So but that's um, okay. But you know. You have that under control anyway. So I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all have an awesome rest of your day. See you in two weeks. Adios. Fortnightly. Okay. Keep being awesome, everybody. Bye.